Hi guys! Um, I wanted to do a little bit of math and science and maybe language arts with you guys as well um, and just catch up on some of the stuff we sent home. So um, I was going to do bean number bonds because we have fun doing number bonds and you guys have beans. Um, but then as I came out here to my chalkboard and I brought my beans out, I thought I want to talk to you a little more about seeds. I want to talk to you a little bit more about flowers and then we'll end with number bonds. So I know that you guys all brought seeds home and a seed sorting chart. Um, and I hope that you're still doing a lot of that. So, and coming up with ways to sort your beans. Um, I don't have the same beans you guys have, but I have purple green beans. And I don't know if you guys remember me making this envelope, but I made it in late summer at school um, and this is filled with our purple green beans from our garden and from Geneva Peaks. So in May we're gonna plant these and they were our beans and that's exciting. Um, but my purple green beans look much different than the beans you have and that would be one way that I would sort them. So let me put these all away so I don't lose them and I'm gonna get tape to show you mine so I can get it a little closer to you. There it is. Whoop, that's not the side I wanted you to see. Okay, hold on. Okay. There's mine. Okay, does it look different than yours? Yeah, it's got stripes, but it's still a bean. Yours are very red. So I would sort them separately based on color. And if you've been sorting into your different sorting piles, um, you know, and you can also be counting your beans and practicing twos, fours, twos, fives, and tens. Um, but you can start writing down how you're sorting them differently. So this bean is striped. It's a stripey bean and yours is a red bean. That's an adjective. Um, let me show you some other seeds I have that are different than the ones in your bin, but you've got lots of different ones in your jars. Um, here are, can you see them? Carrot seeds. So carrot seeds, what's different about them and my purple green bean? See? That's right, they're smaller. So those are small seeds. Um, and let me show you another small seed that we could sort different. And did you guys try to grow a carrot? I tried and I forgot to water it and it shriveled up. So maybe I should try again. Okay, Oop. These are spinach seeds. So up top right here are spinach seeds. And why are they different than the carrot seeds? Carrot seeds are long and the spinach seeds are round. You can't quite see it, but the carrot seeds are a little bit, uh, they have ridges, um, and the spinach seeds are smooth. Okay, now I've got another round seed that is not smooth. This is one of my favorite seeds. This is Swiss chard, and you guys grew this in the garden as well, and it's still growing, it made it through the winter. Um, and it's gonna grow new leaves. I'm gonna stick some of these on here too. All right, so here I have at the bottom, here I have Swiss chard seeds at the very bottom. And I don't know how close I can get without being blurry. Whoa, it's hard to see, but they are very lumpy and bumpy good ways to describe them. They're a lumpy seed, a bumpy seed, and a bean is a smooth seed. Yeah. So keep sorting your seeds and start writing down some of those adjectives as you become scientists. Um, I hope you guys have been uh, um, collecting seeds from home too. So maybe you've found a banana seed or a kiwi seed or an apple seed and try to figure out how many might be in that fruit um, or vegetable. Maybe it's a cucumber seed. 
and why they look different. So keep exploring seeds. It's a fun time of year to do that. And hopefully you're growing a little bit at home too. Maybe you grew your sunflower sprouts. And if you haven't, um, that's okay. We can start soon. Maybe I'll get these purple green beans to you guys to take care of. So that's our seeds. Now I'm stuck to them. Um, and the other thing I sent home um, was parts of a flower. And I sent you guys home with a tinker tray so that you could make a model of a flower any way that you wanted. Um, and many of you have probably already done that. So um, some of you received a picture that just explains the first parts that we learn of a flower. Um, a stem, roots, I don't have them here. A uh, leaf, hi, and a flower. But I also sent your parents and caregivers, whoops, I just spilled all my carrot seeds. And I'm gonna have a carrot bench on my porch. Whoa. Uh -oh. oh well. So I sent this to everybody. So if you don't have it, um, it's in your parent or caregiver's email. And you guys can print this if you want to go to the next level with your flower parts. So this describes just the parts of a flower, the top part. And this is the part that a plant makes to help it make seeds. So once a plant is a plant, uh, a tree or a tomato plant, um, it gathers all of its food through its leaves and then it uses all of its energy to create this very nice smelling flower. And the flower, a tree grows blossoms like an apple blossom. Um, I think right now there's some fruit trees in blossom. I drove by them and they were beautiful. Um, and outside you've got uh, some things in blossom too. So the flower smells beautiful because it's made to attract a pollinator. That's a bumblebee or what else? Yes, a hummingbird or even bats. Um, so a pollinator comes in and they go right in there because that's the good stuff. And then they get the pollen stuck to their leg. Look at, do you see how orange my finger just got? I just collected pollen. And then they fly to another plant and that pollen goes into a different plant. And that helps the plant make seeds. So you guys can dissect one of these. This is a daffodil. And it looks different than some. I'm sure it's got its own special name. It won't tell me its name. But it's daffodil. And they're in my yard. And I'm sure that you could find a spring flower too. Um, tulip should be blooming soon. So this is my petal. And I can find the stamen and the pistil. So the stamen is the top parts. Um, and I guess if I cut this. Sorry, flower. You can do this at home with a flower. Um, probably with scissors that aren't quite so big. All right. So I'm going to open it up and we can see the inside of the flower. So this is the stamen and that has the filament, which is the big, tall piece. And at the top of the filament is an anther. Geek. There we go. Filament and anther. And the pollen is up there. That's what makes the pollen. So it has to reach way out of the plant and then make a plate of pollen so that that bumps into the pollinators and they collect it. And then the other part of the plant is the part that makes the seeds. Um, and that's the pistil. So that involves the stigma, which is right at the very tip top of the um, this is the sepal, this whole part. See? So at the top is the stigma, and that collects the pollen that falls into this plant. And then the style is the long part that comes down here into the ovary. So the ovary is in there, and if you break yours open, you're going to see these very light colored things that almost look like seeds. See them? Mm -hmm. Maybe. So those are the beginnings of seeds. And if this flower was outside 
and was pollinated, then those would grow into seeds. Um, and I wish I had a dried up flower, but you guys know when our flowers dried up at school outside in the garden, um, they tended to look kind of like odd little pods like this. And if we shook them, we knocked out the seeds. Um, so we have lots of seeds from our cosmos and different flowers that we grew in our garden um, that I collected. So that's because we know pollinators came and they pollinated our flowers. And then in the ovary, those, those teeny, teeny, teeny ovules grew into seeds. And that's the life cycle of the plant. So it grows roots, it grows a shoot, it grows a big tall stem, um, eventually it makes a flower, and then the flower's pollinated so that it can make seeds, and they fall in the ground. And that's a life cycle of the flower. Sometimes, instead of a seed pod on an apple tree, um, these turn into seeds in there, and this grows, 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 grows into an apple. And I bet if you look at an apple or a pear, you can see the part where the flower has died and shriveled up, but it used all its energy to grow a big delicious fruit. Parts of a seed, parts of a flower. Okay, so last thing that I promised I would do was go over number bonds with you guys. So I thought we'd play a fun game with our beans. Yours are in a jar or on a plate. And let's pick a number and start with, you can do 20 or 15 or 10 or start with five any number that is um fun and and challenging for you so if i start with i'm just gonna start with five okay i have five beans so number bonds look like this right we usually do this These are the two numbers that bond together to equal this number. So if this number is five, what two numbers can add up to be five? Yes, two and three. But we could use other numbers that add up to five. We could say, that's right, four, and one make five so that's a number bond but today we're gonna do bean bonds so let's say I have my bean does that look like your beans looks like my beans and let's make a number bond with our beans okay there's my beans for a number bond so I have one two three four five beans it is tough for you guys to see I wish uh, you know what, I'm gonna use tape so that I can turn it sideways. But if you play this at home, you can just have them in your hands. Boop. Five beans, okay? So, let's put our five up there. And now, if I put all five behind my back and I only show you a certain amount, this is gonna be hard to take off tape. It's much easier in our hands. All right, so I put them behind my back and I come out and I show you my hands and I'm only holding two. So, two. That's a really bad two, but it's okay. You know it's a two. How many are behind my back? Mmm. Mmm. Three. So, that's my number bond. There are three, one, two, three, behind my back, and that makes five. Now, if you were to do 10 beans behind your back, your partner has to know how many beans are behind your back. So I like to start with 10, and you could do 10 a bunch of times. So you could do number bonds, and I sent you a bean number bond sheet. Uh, okay, my beans are getting a little messy, but they still look like beans. So both of these could be 10. So your partner's going to put show you 10 beans. So you know you have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
hold on, I gotta put them on my tape so they don't roll out of my hands, but you guys will just use your hands. Now my tape has collected some of my dog's dog hair on it. That's not a bean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, double checking. 10, 10, 10, 10. 10 beans. 10 beans go behind my back. And now I come out and I show you that many beans. Six, you're right. So, six beans. How many are still behind my back? Hmm? If I have six beans that I'm showing you, how many beans are behind my back? You're right, four, four beans. One, two, three, four beans behind my back. So six and four make the sum of 10. And you guys can use the same 10 beans and have different number bonds that make 10. And if you wanna do more beans, you can. So bean number bonds is a good way to practice our addition. Have a great day, you guys. And count those beans.